second in our series looking at the names of God and uh, Gemma introduced this series to us last week and introduced us to the personal name of God Yahweh that means I am or I will be who I will be and if you haven't had a chance to watch that yet hit pause on this go and watch that one and then uh, come back and watch this one later on but following on from Gemma's exploration of the name of Yahweh, or I am, today's verses take us to the middle of an encounter between Moses and God on Mount Horeb, where he encounters God in the form of a burning bush. And it is a fascinating encounter and well worth reading all of. Um, I think it's one of the most incredible um, dialogues in, in the Old Testament. But in the course of that engagement, that encounter, God commissions Moses to go and confront Pharaoh, who was himself considered to be a god, and demand that he set the Israelites free, the enslaved, the massive slave population of Egypt, to go free for no reason and no cost. Moses, of course, knew that that was never going to go well. But Yahweh knew what he was going to do. Yahweh knew that that confrontation was going to lead to the systematic defeat of the gods of Egypt, including Pharaoh himself. But you see, Moses hadn't read the book of Exodus at that point. And so his response to God was much along the same lines as a certainly mine would have been and perhaps yours too you want me to do what well who am I that you'd send me to do that God's response Yahweh's response of course is to say don't ask the question who you are know that I am God is not a God who is limited to being the God of the sea or the God of a mountain or the God of this place or that people. He is, I am. I will be who I will be. He is subject to no one and he is unlimited in his power. Nowhere is beyond his reach. Nothing is beyond him. And I think it's of particular significance to us today in, in Western democracies, as it may be in this time, when our culture is so heavily focused around the self and self-fulfillment and self-centeredness, consumerism, my truth, fulfilling my, uh, my true self. But as Jesus' disciples, we're called to submit, to submit all that I am and all that I have to my God and my King, to move in the opposite direction, for away from self-centeredness to the service of others sacrificially, modelling ourselves on Jesus. Just read the story of Moses. The call that he followed was by no means easy. But it took him from being a nomadic shepherd in the wilderness to becoming the greatest leader of God's people up until the point of Jesus himself. Now, why did he do that? Because he encountered Yahweh. How did it happen? because he submitted to Yahweh and followed him faithfully day in, day out, with his ups and his downs. Through Moses, God brought his people literally out of slavery into freedom, from death to life by God's power. Now, our experience is unlikely to be quite that dramatic or 
probably on anything like that scale, although never say never when it comes to God. But we are each called to shift our life away from self-centeredness to being other-centered, to being centered on him, and that will inevitably lead us to being involved in seeing other people brought from slavery to freedom, from death to life, from darkness into his light. As we serve others with generosity and kindness in big ways and small. But it starts with an encounter in whatever way with him and uh, leading us gently to ask the question perhaps worth asking again today who's at the center of my life am I or is it I am let's pray father God we thank you that you are not just a God of the sea or the land or the sky or fish or badgers or anything else of this people or that but you are the I am you are unlimited not subject to any other you are the creator and sustainer of life and father thank you that although you are put the stars into space you know me by name you know my heart you know our dreams and our flaws you know our pasts and our futures and father I thank you that you love each one of us and that you have called us to be part of your kingdom to be partners with you in building your kingdom. And so I ask, Father, would you in your gentleness, in your love, would you guide us as we seek to submit to you today, to make you the centre of our lives today? And would you show us, each one of us, the next step that you're calling us to take and would you fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit right now that you would enable us to walk in the path that you lay out in front of us come Holy Spirit lead us into freedom that we might share in your story and lead others into your freedom too. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Have a great day.